thank you very much. That's goal number four. And again, number seven, Whitlow, started the move. Well, that was the sort of goal that uh, you, you're knocking in five sides and in practice matches, but Baird made it look so simple, and poor Peter Fox never even saw it till it was uh, nestling in the back of the net. 4-0, Leeds United lead. Again, it's chipped up. Hilaire. That must be a penalty, surely. Well, third time lucky. He's been brought down twice. But uh, shows we don't get away with it this time. So, John Sheridan, 67 minutes play gone. Has a golden opportunity to put Leeds in with a chance. She has done. 2-1. So Sheridan in the 67th minute. Put Leeds back in this game. And really, it had to come. Well, the 21 minutes remaining, so there's uh, plenty of time for Leeds to try and salvage something from this game, which they've always seemed to be dominating, but... Uh, we're taken aback by two very, very quick goals. Sheridan, Davison, yes! Oh, what a goal! Two kills! Well, now then. 69 minutes and Bobby Davison makes it goal number 12 for him and the equalising goal for Leeds. 12 goals to Bobby Davison this season. And it's 2-2. Sheridan. Davison, there, Baird, Baird put it in, 1-0. So, six minutes gone, and Ian Baird gets the final touch, and Leeds going to the lead. I think probably Bobby Davison got a flick on with his head, Vince O'Keefe got to it, couldn't hold it, it squirmed out as you saw, and there was Ian Baird, to bury it in the back of the net. To Simon Garner. Sellers again makes the mistake and Hazelwood comes away for Leeds. There's Mike Whitlow. Has a shot. Davison, yes! Bobby Davison gets number two. Eight minutes gone, and Bobby Davison gets it for Leeds. And he did well. So too did Whitlow. That was nearly through to Davison. Good challenge by Hazelwood. Baird has got a chance.
wrong mistakes in the Plymouth defence, but a lot of hard charging from Whitlow and Aitherwood enabled Baird to get that loose ball. That didn't he do well. He held it and waited. And Ian Baird, as he did last season, gets a goal against Plymouth Argyle. Delair uh, had an excellent first half. Snowden. Whitlow. Snowden. The ball from Davison. Good shot, good goal! Oh, what a beauty! What a beauty from Glenn Snowden! He went from the halfway line and the goalkeeper never got a smell. So 20 minutes remaining, Leeds United lead by two goals to nil and just look at the little defender there. He'll be pleased with that. He picked his spot beautifully. He ran all the way from the halfway line and he's beaming like a headlight. 11 minutes later, Glyn Snodden's first time ball broke for Baird, who scored in a manner he could never quite achieve during disappointing spells with Southampton and Portsmouth. Brighton were within two minutes of a replay when a well-worked free-kick move involving former Portsmouth winger Vince Hilaire brought a powerful shot from John Sheridan, which John Keeley could only parry, and there was Baird to score the winner and make it a happy return for him to the south coast. Brighton 1, Leeds 2. What went wrong as Sheridan centre floated over the defence and Noel Blake raced in to score. Yeah! And Leeds came back again. This time it was Vince Hilaire who outmoved the United defence. Batty. Now there's something moving for Leeds. Oh, nearly. It breaks for Adam, for Snowden rather. Davison brings it down well, turns well. Sheridan. Baird. Yes, Bobby Davison does it! A good move, probably the best move of the half. And the result is a goal that can be surely right on half-time. Looked like a handball there, yes. So we get the third penalty, it was Richard Ord, I fear. Oh, certainly you can't knock John Sheridan's confidence. He wants to make amends. Now, will he put it left or right? That's the decision he's got to make. It's left. A Tony Norman, and it's 2-0. No mistaking this time. To form two of Leeds United. They had the perfect start at Filbert Street from Vince Hilaire's pass. Bobby Davison gave them the lead after only two minutes. And before half-time, they created the goal that proved the winner. Mickey Adams' pass and a stunning shot from Glyn Snowden. The pitch leads right up there on the heels of the leaders. Leeds copied the move to equalise the ball and the goal, falling to Noel Blake. But before half-time, Leeds were level. A bouncing ball fell to Blake. Hilaire was poaching. It was left to a Sheridan curler to cause problems. Tomlinson saved the first effort, but Baird was lurking, and 3-3 was the final score. Leeds fought back. Baird shot, parried by Naylor. Mickey Adams didn't make the same mistake. But celebrations were short-lived. He was struggling there, and Hilaire strapped it in. How did that get in? But it did. So, a glimmer of hope for Leeds. Sheridan, Hilaire, Hazelwood, Blake, Noel Blake gets goal number two, so, quarter of an hour left and leads it back to 3-2. Leeds United were the first on the scoreboard as Hazelwood headed home a corner to the delight of their fans. But Barnes Lake was already in the referee's book when he brought down another Barnsley man. The referee was in no doubt where Blake was heading, though he needed some persuasion from the bench. 
A Barnsley foul in the 77th minute had serious consequences too. A penalty taken by Sheridan. The Gordon Strachan, £300,000 from Manchester United and Chris Fairclough, £500,000 from Spurs. They made their debuts at Ellen Road against Portsmouth and got off to a perfect start thanks to Ian Baird's winning goal. The Gordon Strachan with a free kick. Similar to his position to the one that we had last week against Portsmouth. But it was a shorter one then. Baird is up. Shot! Yes! Carl Shot has scored for Leeds United with a minute to go to half-time. The free kick from Gordon Strachan there was taken. Baird rose above the ball, found Carl Shot, and the signing from Bristol City Puts Leeds United into the lead with just a minute to go for half time. It's still pretty cold here. That sun coming out give us a, give a, a false sense of security at times. You think it's warm, but that breeze is very, very sharp. Now an up and under one, as they say. Williams Blake. Shut! Yes! Two for Carl. Shut! Ho oh, ho! Well, now then. What more can you ask for? Just look at him. He leaps onto the barriers. Strachan again. Take the knock on the head. Something coming in from Williams. It's there! Carl Schutt has got the hat trick. A hat trick for Carl Schutt. Well, you can't ask for more, can you? Trick on his debut against Bournemouth last Saturday was there with the Leeds equaliser. Paddock. Again, another helpful one. Now then for Andy Williams. He must score here. He must do. Oh, get in it, Ted. Well, the bright defence presented it with them, but it was Andy Williams who looked to be thwarted once or twice, but uh, stuck to his task and puts Leeds in the lead in the 41st minute. Ragged stuff at times. Good cross. Hazelwood. Mark Hazelwood, the Leeds United captain, with seven minutes to go, gets the cross from Peter Haddock. In the 83rd minute. And the crowd are giving him the booze. I don't know why. And... He saluted the crowd, he blew a kiss to them, but now he's coming off. And David Batty's coming on. Well... Really, sometimes the mood of the crowd puzzles me from time to time. Soccer season reached its climax. There's sad news of a man who dominated English soccer in a previous era. Don Reavy, the manager who made Leeds United the top team in the late 60s and early 70s, has died at the age of 61. He'd been suffering from motor neurone disease for two years. He caused an outcry when he resigned as England manager in 1977 to work in the Middle East. He returned to Britain in 1984. Don Reavy's ambition was always to work in football. After an international playing career, he became manager of an unsuccessful Leeds United. Soon the club was winning every possible honour. Then Reavy was given the top job in soccer. As England manager, the man known as the boss found himself firmly in the public gaze. I'm delighted to have uh, been made England team manager. And one that's uh, it's a sad day to leave a club that you've been with for 13 years. But things didn't go well. When England looked unlikely to reach the 1978 World Cup, the criticisms mounted. Reavy resigned. Everyone seems to want me out, he said, so I'm giving them what they want. 24 hours later, his deal with the Arabs was leaked. A £300,000 contract to teach soccer to the sheikhs. There was outrage. The FA tried to ban him for 10 years, a judge calling him greedy, deceitful and selfish. After that, he denied allegations that he tried to fix games and bribe players. When Reavy returned home five years ago, he said he regretted his departure. His one book, written in the 1950s, had an ironic title, Soccer's Happy Wanderer.